Honestly, this is a video that I never thought I'd have to make. Empty Box made a video on the subject two or three years ago that I just assumed was pretty much the go-to reference on this subject. But for some reason, you guys keep leaving comments asking what field of view I use, which, which is weird because that information isn't really of any use at all on its own. And more strangely, I get comments telling me that I'm using the wrong field of view, which honestly, just, just, just wow. So obviously there is some misunderstanding out there, which I'm going to try and clear up today. Hello fellow sim racers and welcome to another episode of my super infrequent series, Sim Racing Explained Quick, where I try and answer common questions I receive about sim racing without any of the fluff. Last week, this video went viral. Now, obviously I'm not gonna show it because I don't wanna get copyright striked, but it showed how sense of speed relates to field of view. So I thought now was as good a time as any to try and tackle this subject. The in-game camera in a racing sim has a defined field of view, or to put it another way, how wide or narrow the camera angle is. And in most PC racing sims, you can adjust this in one of the menus. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to find all of that in your specific sim because there's lots of them and you all have Google. Anyway, the camera represents the position and the attributes of your eyes in the game. And all of the geometry in the world that you're looking at in the sim stems from this. The problem is your eyes aren't glued to the screen because your dad beat you with jumper cables when you tried that as a kid. And because we all have different gaming setups, the software can't know how big your screen is, how far away from it you are, and therefore how the field of view of the in-game camera should be set to make sure there's no disconnect between your in-game vision and your real world vision. And that's the goal here, to sync up your real world view with that in the game. Field of view calculation takes into account the size of the monitor, essentially your window into the racing sim, and the distance that your eyes are positioned away from the monitor. As you can see from this animation, as you move further away from your monitor, the geometrically correct field of view becomes narrower, or as you increase the size of the monitor, the field of view becomes wider. And because both of these factors interact, your FOV will stay the same if you increase the size of your monitor as you move it away from your viewing position. When your field of view is set correctly, the game is essentially extending your viewing position into the game world. But when it's incorrectly set and there's a mismatch, this becomes distorted, much in the same way as looking at something through a body of water. That's refraction, baby. So you can see that getting this right is actually pretty important if you want your sim racing sans distortion, which is to say that the geometrically correct field of view gives you the best chance of maintaining your real world sense of perspective and spatial awareness in the game. Although it should be noted that while most sim racers are proponents of using the geometrically correct field of view, there are some that dislike it. And there are some decent counter arguments to take into account though, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. The biggest complaint I hear about using what is technically the correct field of view is that it can take away from the sense of speed. This is pretty flawed honestly. Sure, widening the field of view makes it feel like you're going faster, and if the Wipeout games have taught us anything, that's pretty badass, but there is a cost. Not only are you distorting all of your visual references, but you're just filling the screen with lots of really useless information. The trees blurring past at light speed aren't going to help you hit your brake marker, or look into the apex, which at this stage is little more than a small cluster of pixels. And the opposite is also true. Go too narrow and it'll feel like time itself has slowed down. That's great for seeing all of those all important on track details and nailing the apex, but good luck to all of the other cars that share the track with you and your grandma driving style. But all of that aside, the sense of speed argument is it's just a crutch. The game is moving along at the same velocity and your sense of speed relative to the things that actually matter, like the road, curbs and other cars is identical. It's really only the stuff that you should be ignoring in the periphery of your vision that's giving you that warp speed effect. If you remember your trigonometry lessons from school, then it's actually reasonably straightforward, or it would be if all of the sims were consistent in the way that they calculate the field of view. Most sims measure the field of view in degrees, either on the horizontal or vertical plane, but some others, notably Race Room and the older titles that preceded it, use a preset FOV that you can adjust using a multiplier. This is frustrating, but ultimately it doesn't matter. 
and that's because there are plenty of web-based tools that do all of the hard work for you. All you need to know is how far your eyes are from the screen, the size of your monitor, and it'll give you all of the answers you'll ever need. The go-to site for this used to be Project Immersion, but with Flash now awaiting the final nail to be driven home by Adobe, we have to look elsewhere. Luckily, there are dozens of other sites that all do the same thing, but on a more future-proof platform, and I've included some links in the video description. The number that the field of view calculator has given you is mathematically correct, as long as you put in accurate numbers. So this obviously is the best place to start, and I would strongly advise that you spend some time getting used to driving with the new setting. It's gonna suck to begin with, and you're likely to be slower and perhaps more mistake prone while your brain is readjusting all of its reference points. But given time, you will adjust. And most sim racers attest to an increase in consistency and a better sense of spatial awareness with the correct field of view once they've got past the, ah, it's different, I don't like it phase. However, some racers feel that they need to make some slight tweaks to this number. This may be to gain a bit more peripheral vision, or maybe to see a bit more of your side mirrors or anything else. Of course, field of view is totally down to personal preference. And while the mathematically correct value may be the best in lab conditions, you may find that slightly widening or narrowing it may suit your needs a little better. So that's the basics covered. If you want to know more, then you really should check out that empty box video that I talked about earlier, and it should have popped up as a link in the top right throughout this video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see more content like this in the future. So all that's left to say is goodbye. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.